Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. Today's video I wanted to answer a few requests really, so a lot of people, three, have been asking me, <laughs> so a few people have been asking me about my office fish room, so I've referred to that a few times in videos in the past, uh, essentially I'm talking about this room. So what we've got here is, this is the place that I do my work from, that's my generally my day-to-day -day job. I'm sat here in front of this computer working away. I've got a tank on my left-hand side here and I've got two tanks behind me. So I refer to these as my office tanks. One of the best things you can do if you work from home, I think having a fish tank or an aquarium in or near your working environment is, it helps me immensely in um, reducing stress if nothing else. But it's just great because you get to see it all the time. You spend most of your life working so if you've got your tanks around you, you see them all the time. So I thought I'd show you around these tanks, give you a bit of an update because we've not done an update on these tanks for quite a while. So let me show you around. So we'll start off with Humphrey's tank. So this is the tank that's immediately in my eye line on the left. Humphrey is my Camphor two-tone flower horn. You can see him there. He came from Brian Johnson Cichlids. He's one of the, the premium suppliers in the UK. And look at that handsome fella with his big cock. So this tank, we've talked about it before, it's housed various things in the past. At the moment, it's just got this guy in here. This guy, a Senegal Bicher, a few bristlenose Pocostomus. Why are you not focusing? A few bristlenoses, and, and that's it really. Everyone seems to be getting on quite well. Um, as you can see, I've got this rockscape to the left, which probably isn't ideal for a... Um, a flower horn per se because I know they can tend to be a bit skittish and crash around the place but he doesn't tend to do that uh, and it obviously all those nooks and crannies in there gives them somewhere to hide or somewhere for the other fish to hide and uh, behind this bit of wood there is actually a cave which he can get in and sometimes he will go in there and sulk if he's feeling like sulking for any particular reason the tank itself is just shy of three foot um, cubed. I've just added these plants actually, so the, the only reason these are in here are because they came out of another tank and I just didn't have anywhere to put them, so I thought I'll stuff them in there just now. He's having a rare old time with them. He's obviously trying his best to destroy them all, but it seems to be keeping them occupied, and I think that's a good thing. Um, but this guy, he's brilliant. I love the colours on him. He's growing well as... As you can see, if you've been following along the channel, and if you haven't, why haven't you subscribed yet? Yeah, but he's doing really well in this tank. Um, yeah, so I've got these decorations, which eventually will probably come out, but I thought I want something I like looking at as well at the same time. The tank itself has got an internal sump. This thing here you can see screwing around. It's called a spin stream. I'll get my finger out of the way or I'll focus on it. And basically that just changes the direction of the flow from the outlet pump. So it's an internal sump here. The intakes are behind all these rocks. So the water's being filtered through the rocks. Then it goes up, down and out. It's just got loads of sponge and alpha grog and things like that in there. And that's doing really well. But as well as filtration here, as you can see, I've got this pothos plant growing out the top of it, which is doing a brilliant job of sucking up all the nitrates and a couple of those bamboo plants there all stuck in that internal sump but this thing's doing great the levels in here are really solid they never really move around much at all and then on top is just kind of a display of the foods that I'm feeding at the moment so these are some of the foods that I'm feeding I've got the the bug bite the flavor bug bites here they're doing really well cichlid gold from Hikari I've got a tropical flower horn young food it's quite high energy high fish meal or protein content content rather and um, so i thought i'd give it a go and to be fair he loves it the carry viber bites not necessarily for the flower horn as such but a lot of my other tanks feed off there and then here i've got some spirulina pellets and some um algae wafers for various other fish and um, if i show you this for instance we'll try a bit of this for now a few of these pellets in there he goes mad for them, he loves them. And down there you can see the Senegal 
bike chair. And the two live quite harmoniously together. Not really any fighting or anything going on. They're they all a bit of chasing. But it really doesn't last very long at all. That's about the extent of the, the chasing that goes on. It gives them something to do. That thing there, you can see that's the camera from my Felix Smart. So all the electrics are hooked up to the Felix Smart, which is this box here. And that basically allows you to use your phone to control your aquarium if you like. And I can set rules and things like that so I can, if the temperature goes too low, to send me alerts and make sure all the parameters are being monitored correctly. So if here you can see there's the the Felix version of a Senai that lets me know what's going on in there. But yeah, having some teething problems with it, but it's getting there. I think the retail release is going to be within the next month or two. And then we should have a better version altogether. So that's aquarium number one. Number two is the White Cloud Mountain Minnow Tank. And obviously some golden White Cloud Mountain Minnows in there as well. This is the tank that I kind of threw a load of plants at and see what sticks. It's pretty much a kind of a jungle-ish type setup in as much as I don't do much maintenance on it. But I really like the look. So I've kind of got all kinds of plants in here. It's it's a dirtied tank, so it's got compost which is capped with sand and the stones are from my local river. A few bits of driftwood so various kind of moss, java fern, um, yeah, all kinds of plants. I tried my best to, to kind of escape it and then just threw plants at it and see what sticks. And to be honest, I'm quite happy with the result. And as much as I don't really do much maintenance in this tank, I just kind of let it grow. But the fish seem to really like it. I really like it. So it's really successful, I think. Um, I've just done a water change and clipped a load of the plants here so the valves at the back were really quite overgrown but I've cut some of them back but yeah it's filling in nicely I think it, I really like the natural look fish themselves are looking great I've not seen any breeding action as yet but I'm sure it's to come or at least I really hope it's to come soon One of the beauties about this tank is I don't really need to heat it because um, these are quite happy in cold water so the temperature of the rooms makes them even happier. So they're always fairly active these fish. So they're, they're quite good for this kind of setup where you always you see something going on. Previously in this tank I had uh, loads of coolie loaches, bristle nose plecos, uh, basically loads of different breeds that hid constantly so I never really see anything but it's always nice to see these guys in and about um, like I say no breeding action as of yet but we'll get there still using the old bin bag for a a backdrop I don't know if you can tell that check out a previous video if you want to see how I did that I keep meaning to change it, but I never never really need to get round to it. Or I never get round to it and don't really need to because it looks fine as it is. So that's that tank. And then the third tank in here, this is the tank that I inherited from one of my neighbours. And gave it a bit of a revamp. So this is the one that's currently hosting the Celestial Pearl Daniels. Or Galaxy Vasboros, whatever you want to call them and a big bunch of cherry shrimp. At the moment I've got a breeding or a breeder box hanging off it because I have seen some possibly breeding behaviour. So I'm going to keep monitoring it. I just wanted to have this running so if I did see something I could quickly whip them out into something that was already set up. And um, so yes it does spoil the aesthetic somewhat having this hanging off it but you know 
needs must. Uh, both these tanks, so these are side by side, both these tanks are run by hang on back filters or hang on side in this case. And these are my Jeepo wish lights, which are really good. In fact, they're too good. Um, probably only need one of them on there. But in terms of the scape, this is again, it's using a, I think this is Eco Complete, the substrate, and a load of bits of driftwood and dragon rock that I had left over from other scapes. Um, we had a bit of an algae breakout in this tank, so, well, I was trying to use carpeting plants down at the bottom. I had to do a blackout just to get rid of the, the blackbeard algae, so it was just going insane. So the blackout for a couple of weeks and then the carpeting plants died off at the same time. So I've not got round to trying that again yet, but we'll, I don't think it really hurts it too much. But I'm happy with it as, as it is for the moment, but we might come back to that in a future video. Um, but some really healthy shrimp in this tank. Like I say, these Galaxy of Asboras are CPDs, um, they really are beautiful fish, they're amazing. It's just when you, when you catch them close up, um, so colourful, so patterned, so yeah, really nice fish, but also so fast and really hard to capture. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they're lovely little fish, and I quite like this. This the scape here is lots of nooks and crannies, that's what I was going for. So there's loads of little passageways and caves and tunnels. And again, in terms of plants, I'm not I'm not a great one for plants and remembering the correct names and all that. So there is some Bucephalandra in here. There's some Java fern, some mosses, and various other bits and bobs. But again, it's just kind of throw plants at it and see what sticks. So I hope you enjoyed that little tour around the the office. Um, again, like I said before, can't recommend it enough. If you do work from home or even if you don't, if you have the opportunity to have a little small fish tank, even if it's not got fish in it, just some shrimp or some plants or something like that, it's a brilliant distraction from the work day. You just take your mind away from it for five minutes and check out what's going on. It's that little bit of nature that you're bringing inside. Um, I think it's really good. So anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that little tour. Please click on that subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment, let me know what you think, and we'll catch you again in the next one. Bye! Bye.